Ross Atkins is the general manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. He joins us now. Ross, I don't know what I'm allowed to ask you or not ask you. Am I allowed to ask you? You're allowed. Am I allowed to ask you? Well, he doesn't have I'm to saying, answer. Any, ask any interest in any free agents out there? I know it's a, <laughs> it's a weird spot. I mean, we saw what happened to Dave Roberts. He got in all sorts of trouble. But you're a GM. You're an executive. You can make your own call. What are you saying? I'm just wondering who's in charge of Photoshop <laughs> or MLB. That was good work there. It is. Yeah, that, was, that was impressive. So um, is it fair to say that your club would be interested in big free agents? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can, any executive in baseball, as you talk about someone like Shohei Otani, I mean, it's uh, it's one of one, right? Like, it's never been done before. He's still doing it. Uh, even with the procedure that's already occurred, to, to think about what that could do to all 30 teams is easy for any executive in baseball, any fan, any player to get excited about. But even there's only a few clubs that can fish in those waters, right? You're one of them. There's only a few clubs that have the payroll that could go and acquire and make the pay that would be he'd command. Yeah, it's it's interesting. It's 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 not just as simple as payroll, and obviously you guys know that. But um, you know, any any acquisition, even if it's not of this magnitude, the agility to do it, how it impacts you in the short term, right. long term, uh, the dynamic that you have with ownership to be able for them to understand the risk that is going into acquiring someone over five years and AAVs above twenty million dollars is. Uh, they're really significant decisions that you have to have alignment in order for the organization to sustain success because you want to keep making decisions like that. Right. See, I look at it from the parameters of baseball payroll. Is this, are there times where outside matters, outside marketing could impact your payroll? I mean, listen, there's there's these are businesses and, you know, there's a lot of people that love baseball and that's not my job to, you know, process that. Think about it. Now, there are people that, you know, work for every major league baseball team that can help an executive think about that, uh, potentially work with, uh, you know, an agent or representation to have a better understanding to. Uh, you know, be fair and to, you know, do what is best for the game, do what's best for the, the player and do what's best for your team. Okay. Hey Ross, just talking about the players specifically, forget about the pitching aspect of it. And, and when I looked at it, I thought last year, as crazy as this sounds, I thought he just started like turning the corner offensively into the next level of performance. Your own internal analysis, do you agree with that assessment or – did you have some different look at it? I, you know, every time that we've watched Shohei play, uh, I mean, I think all 30 executives would would feel the same. It's it's uh, you know, like we're around great athletes, we're around incredible players all the time, uh, but it's it's definitely a, a high high level. The the run tool, the bat speed, the leverage. The way that he stays inside pitches and can go the opposite field right. and still stay on time to pull the ball and, and get it out of the park with it's ease crazy. and and then hit a hard ground ball you know up the middle and if it's just a little bit offline of the second baseman he's safe. So I mean there's there's just as an offensive player he's unique. Ross but I mean as I look this like this pursuit right of Shohei Otani also comes with a lot of pressure and risk because I mean you have a team to put together and you have some questions within the team like who are you going to extend Black or yeah. Junior we're looking at Bichette Springer um, obviously uh, also part of that mix. How do you balance that out you got the information that this would be an unbelievable player yes also unbelievable addition just business wise business yeah. decision how do you balance everything how you put two and two together well I, I don't think that we would be in a position to be considered or to be considering really high impact free agents of the caliber of someone like Shohei if we didn't have a really strong roster in place um, there's a there's a lot of players on our team beyond the players that you mentioned that we're really excited about. Uh, Dalton Varsho doesn't get nearly enough attention. He had somewhat of a down year offensively, but the impact he had on our team this year was incredible. He was one of the better, certainly one of the best defenders in the game in the outfield and a significant impact on our roster. Alejandro Kirk's defense was remarkable down the stretch into the playoffs, catching every single day. 
uh, significant impact players with uh, you know a bright future ahead and a lot of time with the Blue Jays. We're certainly committed to keeping that group together. Of course, with with Bo and Vladdy, want to do everything we can for those guys to be coming back to Toronto in 20 years and putting their arms around one another and celebrating championships. We were, you know, fortunate enough to have Jose Bautista back in this year and watch what that meant for his teammates. And we want to see that happen again and again. Look, you're, you have a powerhouse club, uh, obviously, Ross. I'm, I'm, as I'm thinking, when we're talking about the free agents that we like on the market. Two of them are, were your guys, you know, Kiermaier and Chapman were excellent defenders. Uh, even seeing them play, uh, they're kind of more than the sum of their parts. What do you do to replace those guys if you are in fact replacing those guys yeah yeah we actually have you know a really good group that made some incredible progress davis schneider last year was one of the better stories in baseball now not in terms of total impact but just uh, there weren't a lot of people talking about him before he got to fenway <laughs> and you know, hit a couple home runs and you know really put a spark into our lineup so uh, kevin biggio has had a really solid second half and really impressed by where he is in his career uh, Santiago Espinal is a really good player so uh, there's other players in AAA that we feel like could complement there and, and, and set a floor for us to look to increase and improve upon which we will do uh, we we see avenues to do so and we will be looking to improve and the names that you mentioned are certainly still in our in our mix they are okay yeah, absolutely okay good to know we go. so let me let me ask you that like I know playoffs have skill and luck um, but I also know you and Mark are like like the ultra competitive people. <laughs> and so how do you like you took a step back offensively last year overall. Yeah. Um, your pitching was fantastic. The Manoa situation was like unexpected and I, I still yeah. can't even wrap my arms around it. So you expect him to be back and better next year. He has to be. So in your mind what do you what do you guys need to do collectively to go from being really good to being great. Yeah. I mean that you know our offense over the last four years has been one of the best offenses in baseball including last year uh, just just how impressive they were the other three. So you know I think speaking offensively specifically um, you know really excited about Donnie Mattingly taking the lead there uh, to work with Hunter Mintz and Guillermo Martinez to ensure that uh, we're adjusting to the league. The league adjusted to us and we need to do a better job of getting the right information to Vladdy and Bo and George and Alejandro and Varsh and make sure that um, you know it, it's not just on them. It's not just OK you guys are good players and it's on you. It's on us. You know we've got to figure out a way to have the best possible information in front of them. What is what's uh, Don Mattingly's new title. He has a new title. He, year, he's right? the bench coach offensive coordinator and DeMarlo Hale comes offensive in. Offensive coordinator. That's yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's okay. just lead, leading our offense and scoring runs. Right. Yeah, when I look at Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for example you know and, and I know that he spoiled us right. I mean he goes out there and has this monster season and then he has solid years. Years, and all of a sudden we're like oh he's struggling now yeah. I'm thinking the league you just mentioned it has adjusted to him and now he needs to make adjustment uh, to the league how you know what what is the process with him because obviously we know what he's capable of doing yeah. but he's falling just slightly mm -hmm. short of maybe his potential yeah I mean I, I, I really do feel like I, I think about that on a, a very regular basis is you know how did we let him down that's how I think of it that's how I go to bed at night thinking there's got to be a better way uh, to have him in a stronger position on a daily basis because uh, the bat speed the strength uh, his plan his work is all solid uh, so we've we've done a lot of we spent a lot of time and energy this year uh, and into this offseason with John with Donnie uh, obviously Guillermo and Hunter thinking about better ways to streamline information and make sure that we're distilling it in a way that he can really maximize everything that he's capable of and he still had a great year. You know you, yeah. you said it well Carlos he still had you know a very productive year and he's uh, even when the performance doesn't actually turn into balls over the fence and uh, uh, you know significant OPS or whatever it may be the threat of him in a lineup and the impact that has on others we saw it towards the end of the season and then he's seeing six and seven pitches every single at bat um, you know he's I'm, I'm so excited about this year for Vladdy and very much looking forward to uh, his impact Ross before we let you go is this a pivotal time in the offseason is this um, going to be an important week. Yeah it seems as so yeah it seems like this this is uh, 
you know, there's been a lot of momentum. There's been a lot of momentum. And, you know, within the next, you know, 10 to 15 days, I think we'll have a different shape. Uh, the landscape of available players in the next two weeks will probably be different. Fair enough. Right? <laughs> Good enough for you, BK. Fair enough. <laughs>